Hello, welcome again everyone to another pre-recorded lecture and for this video, we would be talking about formworks and falseworks. Okay, so to begin with, when we are to deal with concrete works, of course, there would be a certain step in there wherein we would be pouring concrete. And in concrete pouring, we are to deal with, of course, fresh concrete. And what you are actually seeing in this slide right here right now, is what you would be calling fresh concrete. And fresh concrete is a certain material that is very workable and it is very remoldable. And with those, we can say that our fresh concrete is a certain material that has no definite shape. But of course, we want to have a certain concrete structure with a definite shape. So to deal with that matter, since our fresh concrete does not have any definite shape, we are to pour it into a mold with our desired definite shape. And in construction, that mold that I was talking about earlier is what we would be calling formworks. So formworks is actually our temporary mold wherein we would be pouring our concrete that has our desired shape for the concrete. So what you are actually seeing right now right here is what you would be calling formworks. So once again, formworks is the uh, temporary mold. So what about for false work? So what is false works? So for starters, false works is your temporary structure used to uh, support your permanent structure until it becomes self-sustaining, I mean self-supporting. So what you are actually seeing here, so if this is to be, wait by the way, if this is to be your form works, your false works would be this supports right here. So the use of this um, false works right here is to support our concrete until it becomes hard enough to support itself but if you would be asking that isn't it the case that when we are to talk about formworks doesn't it automatically include false works so the answer in that question depends on who you would be asking if you would be asking cdot or the colorado department of transportation they would say that your formworks and your false works would be two different terms but if you would be asking ACI or American Concrete Institute, they would say that when we are to talk about formworks, it would automatically include false works. So false works would be under formworks. That's if you would be asking American Concrete Institute. But once again, if you would be asking Colorado Department of Transportation, both of these works would be uh, separate. So there. Okay, but let's have a little bit of a recap from our previous pre-recorded lecture about woodworks. That when we are to deal with lumber or woodworks, the common uh, unit for the quantity would be in terms of board foot. And board foot is actually a volume with this dimension. So 1 foot by 1 foot by 1 inch. So getting this volume right here, you would be getting 1 board foot of a volume so once again one board foot is actually a quantity i mean a unit for volume let's say that this is to be the lumber one foot by one foot by one inch this is to be one board foot so if you would be getting the volume of this cube right here i mean this certain board foot right here that is to be so one foot by one foot by one inch and if we would be converting both of these into inches for us to get the volume in cubic inches that would be 12 inches by 12 inches by one inch so solving for this volume so 12 times 12 times 1 that is to be 144 cubic inches so meaning for every board foot there would be 144 cubic inches so I, I would just be putting it here so 144 cubic inches okay so erasing this but what if you would be dealing with the lumber with this uh, format so for example that you are to get the number of board foot of this certain lumber so let's say two inches by four inches by let's say 12 feet so as you can see here inches inches and feet you can actually do it this way you can either 
um, convert this first into inches and solve for the volume then divide by 144 so if you would be doing that so I would be um, putting it here so times so I would be converting this into inches first so for every one I mean for every 12 inches there would be one foot so from that this would cancel out and if you would be multiplying this you would be arriving at a unit of inches cube and if it's if it is already in inches cube you would be converting this into board foot and for every board foot so for one board foot there would be 144 cubic inches so we have derived this earlier already and if you would be multiplying this all of these units right here would cancel out and it would leave you an answer in board foot okay but if we are to um, simplify these terms right here so 144 and 12 so 12 divided by 144 12 divided by 144 that is to be 1 over 12 so meaning if you would be simplifying these red terms right here that would be one board foot for every 12 inches inches um, feet so basically we can just solve it like this so again and as you can see here inches inches so inches would cancel out and feet would cancel out and it would give you an answer in board foot already so our answer here would be eight board foot so let's confirm so that is to be 2 by 4 by 12 divided by 12. So that is to be 8 board foot. So that is how you would be getting the number of board foot in a certain number. Okay, so this would be your conversion factors. Okay, so another thing that we should remember from the previous pre-recorded lecture is the area for the plywood. And in here in the Philippines, the most commercially available dimensions of the plywood would be 4 feet by 8 feet by whatever thickness it may have so for example that this is to be your plywood this dimension right here is to be 8 feet and this dimension of i mean this dimension right here would be in 4 feet okay but if we are to convert these units right here in metric so if we are to convert it into meters that would be 2.44 meters and this would be 1.22 meters but you can actually just use 1.2 by 2.4 meters for the sake of estimation though theoretically this would be its accurate dimension but for the sake of estimation you can use these dimensions right here so if you are to use these dimensions right here for just one uh, plywood so if this is to be your plywood the area for one plywood so area ply is equal to 1.2 by 2.4 so 1.2 by 2.4 that is to be 2.88 so 2.88 square meter per plywood so we would be using this factor right here in the determination for our form works okay okay so in formworks estimation so this would be the quantities that we would be estimating so the first thing that we would be estimating in this i mean in formworks is the forms itself so forms so forms or your formworks itself would be the uh, material that is in contact with your fresh concrete and in this case right here that would be this plywood right here so this would be the and ply so the number of plywood so the second thing that we should be estimating would be the bracing and what you are seeing here so i would be highlighting the bracings here so this would be the bracing so it would be this woods right here so there the use of this bracing is of course to brace our forms for it to retain its shape after pouring since concrete has a very high pressure when it is being poured so once again the use of the bracing is to be uh, for the support for the forms itself 
and this is to be in terms of board foot and of course the pieces of lumber that you would be buying basing it from the board foot that you have computed so how can we compute this you can either count them directly so if you are to count them directly so just count this 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 and those so if you would be counting them directly that would be more accurate but that would be um, time consuming and that would be much harder but for our estimation purposes we can actually just I uh, use the factors that our engineering forefathers have derived and by their rule of thumb you can actually just use this factor right here so 12.71 board foot per square meter so what that means is that for every square meter of forms that you would be installing you would at least need 12.71 board foot of bracing so this is only applicable if you would be using two inches by two inches lumber so if for example that this certain lumber right here is i mean has a dimension of two by two you can use this 12.71 board foot per meter squared factor as a method of approximation okay so i would just be erasing this and for number three so last but not the least you would be estimating the false works or the scaffold so the scaffold so what is the scaffold by the way so if you if if this is to be the first time you would be hearing the term scaffold this is what a scaffold looks like so this on your left this is what you would be calling an H frame made out of galvanized iron and same is true as this they have used galvanized iron here but this is not an H frame scaffold so if you would be using H frame scaffolds or GI pipes as your scaffold you can just directly count them and if you would be counting them that would be much more accurate but here in our pre-recorded lecture we would be making use of lumber as our scaffold so it would basically look like this right here so this is to be your scaffold so if we would be using lumber as our scaffold so this is what it would typically look like according to max fajardo so this uh, data right here in this slide right here was um, copied from the book of max fajardo which is simplified construction estimate third edition okay so if this is how it would look like so you would be having a vertical member you would be having a horizontal members and you would be having diagonals as your brace that's if you would be um, getting the scaffolding for the column pouring so this data right here i mean this figure right here is in reference with this um, data right here so the usage of this table once again i have copied this from the book of max vardo the usage of this table right here is pretty much straightforward wherein you would just be uh, multiplying these factors right here to the appropriate data so for example that you would be estimating for the scaffolding for column you would be multiplying these factors right here to the uh, height of your column if you would be uh, computing for the number of board foot for every beam you would be multiplying these factors right here by the length of your beam and as for your flooring you would be multiplying these factors right here by the area of your uh, flooring slab so it would be as uh, straightforward as that but take note guys so if you can see here from the book it is said here that for for every meter height of your column you approximately need 4.7 board foot for your vertical members but if you can see here 21 board foot for every uh, meter i think that is quite high so it is better for us if we would be dividing these factors right here in the middle by two 